Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Devotions this morning, Friday morning, last one for the week as we head into the weekend. And uh, as always, I do hope and pray you've had a good week and uh, that you're looking forward to being uh, with your church family on Sunday, uh, perhaps even family tomorrow. Or uh, like I've said before, if you're a sporting mum or dad, you're probably driving all over the place, dropping kids off here, there and everywhere. Carol, good morning. Uh, be in prayer for your Sunday services and uh, pray for the presence and power of the Lord uh, and that it just be a wonderful day of magnifying and glorifying the Lord. I'm sure that would be a blessing. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to Acts chapter 11. Margaret, good morning. Seen you for a while. Margaret, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Acts chapter 11 this morning, Acts chapter 11. <clears throat> you know... Uh, I've used this illustration before, long, long time ago, but I get to use it again because now, hey, Michael, how you doing? Now I get to uh, I get to use it because I have a grandson, and uh, you know, he was over yesterday and and you know walking around as they do once they start walking, man, they they are off, they are off, and uh, you know, like many houses, like your houses, we've got two big glass double doors out the out the back going out to the back and and you know ladies men uh you know you've got to clean them regularly you've got dogs they slobber all over it and paw prints and all that sort of stuff but you know tracy will clean it or whatever but you always know you always know when judah's been around because he'll put his hands always without fail he'll put his hands on the on the glass door and you know where he's been because you can see his handprints you know he's left his DNA, and uh, he's he's been there. You, you don't have to see him, but you know he's been there because he's left his prints there. Uh, I like this passage of scripture. Hey, brother Stephen, good morning. I love this passage of scripture in Acts chapter eleven. I want to read a few verses to you in verse number nine, to, uh, chapter eleven, verse nineteen. It says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen travelled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, pre uh, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord, Rolf, good morning, the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. The hand of the Lord. That is a powerful statement. The hand of the Lord was with them. You know, when you think about handprints, we often think about in Christianity, there is a poem uh, dealing with footprints. And, uh, you know, normally it's it's uh, associated with a, with a picture, Judy, good morning, and you see one set of footprints and the poem goes something like, you know, when I was struggling and I was walking with the Lord and then all of a sudden I only saw one set of footprints and then, it goes on and says, the Lord carried me, Lindsay, good morning. And, and that's why there's only one set of footprints, because the Lord was carrying us through those dark and difficult times. Well, we don't often talk about the handprints, Jocelyn, good morning. We don't often talk about the handprints. And, you know, we said before that, you know, when you see handprints, you know that a child's been there. You know that someone's been there because they've left their prints, whether it's on a glass door, whether it's on a glass you've been drinking or whatever, there's always handprints you know that someone's been there now we know also in the world that it, it uh, law enforcement agencies and police and so on you know handprints are a big thing to try and see who's committed the crime why because every person has a distinct set of handprints that is just for them right Shari, good morning. A distinct set. Of, and so therefore, the hand of the Lord, the handprints of the Lord, he is, there is a distinct set of handprints that the Lord has. And you know when the Lord has been somewhere or you know when the Lord has been because he's left his prints there. His DNA is all over the place. And so when we think about that this morning, we want to think about having the hand of the Lord. Now, we need the hand of the Lord. We know that we need the Lord in our life, right? We can be saved, but oftentimes being saved, we can walk our own path, we can do our own thing and, and so on. But Lord, listen, there, there comes a time where we go say, hey, I, I can't do this on my own. I need the hand of the Lord to be with me. You know, we need the hand of the Lord upon our families. And you know, we need the hand of the Lord upon, you know, his churches. You know, churches today, 
Church, and look, churches today can function without the presence of the Lord. It's a sad reality. It's a fact. It's a sad fact, but it is fact that churches can function without the presence of the Lord. They don't need to have the Lord's DNA over it at all. It doesn't, they don't need to have the handprint of the Lord on it at all. They can still function without it. It's sad, but it happens. All right? Now, I don't know. I don't want our church. I'm sure you don't want your church to be like that. And so, therefore, we, we need to understand that we need the hand of the Lord upon us. Now, I want to read just a few scriptures and I'll give you a few thoughts dealing with the hand of the Lord. I want to go to the book of Ezra. I love this. Ezra, we think about the hand of the Lord. Now, when you think about, you know, in the Bible, we talk about the hand, hand laying on of hands and the Bible talks a lot about hands. Um, and when you think about the laying on of hands or, or, or that particular subject, you often think about identifying and, you know, when you go and orda or ordain into the ministry, normally you have an ordination and, and hands are laid on a, upon a certain person. They're identifying with that person that they're called into the gospel ministry. That's what laying on of hands is all about. We lay hands on the sick. The Bible says that in James chapter 5, those that are sick anoint with oil and the laying on of hands. So there's a necessity for the laying on of hands throughout the scripture you see that, that God imparts through the laying on of hands. You often see the patriarchs in the Old Testament, uh, when they're blessing their children, they would lay hands on them to pronounce that blessing. It's a picture of imparting upon the life of a person. It talks about leading, talks about guiding, talks about giving. The hand talks about generosity. The left hand, the right hand, the right hand speaks of power, the left hand weakness. So there's a lot of different uh, different topics and thoughts dealing with hands in the Bible. And when you think about the hand of God, the hand of the Lord, my goodness, don't we need the hand of the Lord upon our life? Now, Ezra knew this. Just let me read a few scriptures. I'm just going to scoot through these. Ezra uh, chapter 7 and verse number 28, Ezra said this. He says, uh, dealing with the Lord, he says, and hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Now he's talking about leaving Babylon, Pastor Samu, going back to uh, going back to Jerusalem uh, and and rebuilding. I mean, uh, we won't go through it. Zerubbabel was the wall. Uh, Zerubbabel, sorry, was the foundation of the temple. Nehemiah was the wall. Ezra was the priest. He was getting the priesthood already. So there was a number of different things that he had to do. But notice he says the hand of the Lord was on him and strengthened him. And we need the hand of the Lord to be upon us and we need the strength of God upon our life. And we know when the hand of the Lord is there because the prints are there. You, you can't see the Lord, but you know where he's been, right? Uh, the wind bloweth, John chapter 3, the wind bloweth where it listeth. You can't see the wind, but you see the effects of the wind. And you can see the effects of the Lord Jesus Christ, where he's been and what he's done. So Ezra is saying, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he strengthened me. Daniel you know, Daniel, when he, when he fell, to his, fell to the ground, uh, the, the hand of God was placed upon him and strengthened him and picked him up. We need to be lifted up at times and strengthened in our own bodies. Uh, the book of Ezekiel, let me read this to you in Ezekiel chapter uh, 37, verse 1. Chapter 37, verse 1. This was something that happened regularly in Ezekiel's time. And it happened in John, in Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 1. Ezekiel 37 one says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me. And just think about how strong the hand of the Lord is. I mean, it strengthens us, but it carries us. It lifts us up. And we need the hand of the Lord upon us. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. Let me just read this to you. Acts chapter 7. And uh, uh, Stephen was preaching and people got upset. <laughs> Acts chapter 7 verse number 50 it says this uh, hath not my hand talking about God hath not my hand made all these things I mean look your handmade I'm handmade God I mean isn't it good to have handmade things we don't we don't I mean I remember the day when my grandma used to hand make all clothes and she used to knit jumpers and so on that generation they they, they were very uh, frugal with their money and they wouldn't go out and spend a lot of money but they would make a lot of things in the home, though a lot of handmade stuff, and and still that generation today would will get in the shed and they'll make things and so on handmade. There's something there's something precious about things that are handmade. I think about Genesis chapter two, where God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and his hands had to be applied. He was handmade, as I said. You and I are handmade. 
Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 18, when, Jer- uh, when God says to Jeremiah, go down to the house of the potter and I'll give you a message there. And he saw the potter with the clay and, and molding and making and shaping and it was marred in the hands of the potter. Instead of throwing it away, the potter remade it. Remade it, his hands, the loving, guiding, strengthening hands of the potter was upon the clay. And it's a great picture of the Lord in our life and his hands are upon us. Uh, Acts chapter 13, let me read this to you. Acts chapter 13 and verse number 11. Acts 13 verse number 11 uh, says this. uh, And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And thou shalt, now watch this, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Of course, that was Paul dealing with a demon-possessed person. He says, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Uh, you know what I mean? So therefore, we talk about the hand of the Lord and his power. Hey, Kim, good morning. And so the hand of the Lord signifies so many different things. And so when we think about the hand of the Lord, we need the hand of the Lord, as I said, upon our life, upon our ministries, upon our families, the churches, everything. We need God's hand. And we can't see the Lord, but we know where he's been. We know what he's doing because he leaves indications that he's been there. And as I said before, for those that have just jumped on, we know that when the grandkids have been around or the kids, their handprints are all over the place. You've just gone around cleaning the house and they've messed up their handprints. And, and, you know, you love the grandkids coming over. I mean, who wouldn't want the grandkids to come over? But you see where their sticky handprints have been. You know that Judah's been there or you know that Blair's been there or you know that one of the grandkids has been there. Why? Because the handprints are there. So when it talks about the hand of the Lord upon us, the hand of the Lord upon something, he leaves his DNA, he leaves his prints, and his prints are very, uh, very distinct to him. Very distinct. So let's go back to Acts chapter 11. Just want to give you a few thoughts here dealing with this. You know, in these days in which we live, and we often use that term, but we are living in the last days. We have been. Uh, since the Lord came and went in his first coming. We know that. The Bible actually tells us in, in um, Hebrews that it was the beginning of the end of the world. And so, uh, therefore, we know that we're, we're, we're rapidly approaching the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but we still need the hand of the Lord upon us and upon our ministries and lives. And I like this because he says in verse 20, And some of the men which which were of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus, and the hand of the Lord was with them. You know, we need the hand of the Lord. Pastor Dala, good morning. We need the hand of the Lord upon preaching today. If I could encourage each and every one of you, um, you know, for your churches and everything, pray for the pray for the preachers, pray for those who are preaching. We need the hand of the Lord upon that. Uh, we need it in in the sense of power, but we need it in guidance and leading too. Because you know, in the message, you want to be led in the message as a preacher. You want to say the right things. You don't you don't want to say obviously the wrong things, and you you want to say what the Lord wants you to say, and no more, and no you know all those sorts of things. And and you really, folks, let me tell you, your your prayers are vitally important for every preacher. Honestly, they're vitally important. So. So the hand of the Lord was with those that were preaching the gospel. We got some preachers on today and we we thank the Lord for you men. And, uh, you know, we're praying for churches this Sunday. We're praying for preachers as they preach the word this Sunday. Why? I tell you why. Because souls, yes, need to be saved. There's no doubt about that. But there's saints that are going to be gathering on a Sunday. They need to hear from God. They need to be encouraged. They need to be strengthened. They need to leave church knowing that they've heard from the Lord. And the only way that that's going to take place is if the preacher is actually preaching the word of God, the word of God. So the hand of the Lord was with those that were preaching and and something magnificent happened. All right, something magnificent happened. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Now, remember, Fraser, good morning. Remember they were at Antioch. This is where the church at Antioch started. Okay, so they went out preaching because they were scattered. The hand of the Lord was with them. People believed and a church was established. So God's hand, the Lord's hand was building his church. Now, I'm at the point in my, my I'm 54. I'm, I'm at a stage in my life where I, you know, I finally realized, you, <laughs> I'm thick headed. Finally, I can't build a church. I really can't. I can't build a church. Only the Lord can build his church. Now, do I help him? Sure. But I can't build it. 
I, I've been around long enough to hear all this, this, the, the soul winning techniques. I've heard all the, you know, if you go out and you letterbox X amount of number of houses and uh, 10 out of that 1,000 will do this and 1 out of 10 and all that. And I've heard all the numbers and I've come to the point in my life, I can't do it. Only the Lord can build his church. And now I witness, I preach as, as well, I hope and pray that you do as well. And, and all those things, we do what God's called us to do. But at the end of the day, the Lord builds his church. It needs his hand on it. It needs his prince on his church. It needs the DNA of the Lord Jesus Christ on his church today. It differentiates between other religions when the hand of the Lord is upon his church. All right. So this is amazing what took place here. And uh, only God can build your church. Only God can build our church. And we need the hand of God upon the house of God today. So, you know, you can see where the Lord's been. He's left his mark. Uh, and, and, and here's another thing too. Listen, listen to this. I didn't read this verse, but listen to verse number 22. It says, Then tidings of these things came under the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. They heard some news, and it was good news. They heard some good news from Antioch. Hey, the Lord is doing something over there. This is exciting. Now, they sent Barnabas to go and check it out to, conf to confirm it. But they heard, isn't it good to hear good news? I tell you, there's so much bad news around today that it's, it's, it's a breath of fresh air when you hear about some good news. Good news about this church doing something or good news about this brother or sister doing something or good news about this family, something great's happening to that family. Listen, let's rejoice with them that rejoice. And when you hear good news about a, a, another church, just either souls getting saved or great things are happening or whatever it is, praise the Lord for that. The Lord is doing something. Now, it's not going to go unnoticed by the devil. All right. It's not going to go unnoticed by the devil. As a matter of fact, in our Bible class, in our church this Sunday, we're going through our doctrinal statement. We're going to look at the doctrine of Satan this Sunday morning. And I tell you, the attention... The, the, the attention that is brought up in, in before him when, when the Lord is doing a work in his church or in your family, sometimes Christians think, why am I under attack so much? Or why, why is our church under attack so much? Well, it's probably because you're doing something right for God. And it doesn't go unnoticed in the eyes of the devil. And he will try and, and discourage you. He'll try and dissuade you. He'll try and do everything he can to stop the joy of the Lord from coming upon your life or that. But you know what? This is why we pray one for another. Right? This is why we pray one for another. And so you see where the Lord's been and, and you hear some good news and, and it's amazing. And, and, you, and you go on and, and he says, you know, sends Barnabas, go, should go as far as Antioch. Now watch this. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, he saw the grace of God. You know, went there and there was something happening and it's like a mate. So I was saying, you, 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 you can see what God is doing. You can see perhaps where the Lord has been. He's left his mark and there's a, he's left a, a great thing uh, as he's, we know, I'm talking metaphorically, you know, we know he abides with us continually and so on and so forth. But, you know, you know, he saw it. He saw the grace of God. So when we talk about the hand of the Lord, we're also talking about dealing with the grace of God. And who doesn't need the grace of God in their life? My goodness, we need the grace of God in our life. And so he came and he'd seen the grace of God. and He was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart that they would cleave unto the Lord. You know, when you've got the hand of the Lord upon you and he's got a hold of you, reciprocate that. Cleave unto the Lord. Cleave unto him. Embrace him. Don't, in a sense, let him go. You know what I mean? Just hold on to him and uh, let him lead you and guide you. My, don't we need the hand of the Lord? And so when we talk about this hand of the Lord and when the Lord leaves his DNA and his, his hand is there, you know that he's doing something. You know that he's been there. He's left his mark. He's left his prince. And that's a great thing about Christianity as a child of God, church of God, whatever, you know, the hand of the Lord. So be praying be praying, brethren, that this Sunday that the hand of the Lord will be upon you, be upon those that are ministering this Sunday, be upon the service. You know, be God, we pray that your hand will just gather, draw people in. You know what I mean? Because we need the hand of the Lord. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, we thank you for your hand, how strong, how mighty, how powerful it is. 
And we pray, Lord, that it would be upon each and every one of us, upon our ministries, our lives, our families, and leave your mark on us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Les, good morning. Sorry, just about finished. Hey, have a great day in the Lord. Thank you for joining all week. I appreciate that. Have a great Sunday. God bless you and look forward to being with you on Monday morning. So until then, goodbye for now.